Thank you for those that's already brought in. And last week, Sister Jennifer had mentioned Home of Hope is a place for homeless. It's not actually a place for homeless. It's for a pe place for people that are struggling with addictions, but it's still a place that we need to help, and we're, we're doing our part to offer them items they need. So thank you for all that's brought in. All we need left now is uh, 10 blankets and hygiene products. And Sister Jennifer has put a blanket out there on the information table. You can get them at Aldi's for like $8. It's the twin size uh, XL. And there's one out there on the information table. It's a very nice blanket for $8. You can pick those up at Aldi's. And then also there's a slip of paper in front of the flyer uh, telling of the hygiene items that they need. So if you'd like to pick one of those up, please grab one of those. And uh, thank you already. We're going to take these things up till the end of November. We've already met our need on our pillows and sheets. So thank you for all that's already brought in. And then reminder, tonight we will not have a regular service. We will have the all-church sing. Uh, it will be people in the church singing. If you haven't been to one, come on out tonight at 6 o'clock. If you plan on singing and like to practice before service, Brother Dan said he would be here at 4 o'clock to help you go through your songs. So if you'd like to come and practice, be here before four, or be here at 4 o'clock. All right. And then also, November the 30th, is, we're going to do a family Sunday where the kids and the teachers from the back can come into the sanctuary and worship with us. Our teachers have been back there since we came back from COVID. We don't actually have Sunday school, but we have Kids Church, and they've been back there since we have started. So we want to give them an opportunity to come into service, be with you in service, and the kids can be in service with us. And that will be on Sunday, November the 30th. And then uh, also this Friday we will be leaving for vacation and uh, pray for us, and uh, Brother Roy will be filling in for me next Sunday, and Sister Darla will be teaching next Wednesday. So thank you to them that's filling in for us. We appreciate it very much. Uh, Bishop Brick was supposed to be here, but something has come up, and he's not able to be with us next Sunday. So Brother Roy has stepped in, and I appreciate that. Where's he at? Oh, he's over there. Thank you. And also today, I'm, I'm trying not to hurry, but I, I want to take a minute here. This Wednesday is Veterans Day. And today I want to take time to honor our veterans. They have served, they've gave of their lives, and their lives will always be impacted because of their service. Some experience pain on an everyday basis because of the service that they served in, and they were in a war and they were wounded. But today we want to just take a few minutes and we want to honor them. We have a little video we'd like to sh share in honor of them today. So. Thank you guys and ladies that have served our country and our nation. We appreciate you. And I have a few little gifts to give to you, but we're going to do that in a minute. And we're going to do our best to social distance. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call up each branch of the military. If you served in that branch, I'll have you come and I'll give you your gift. And uh, we'll, we'll honor you and your branch of service. And then we'll have the next group come up. That way we're not all standing up here and we're not breaking social distance. All right. So today, let's honor our veterans. Watch this little clip video, and we want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate what you've done and what you gave.
Sorry, we had some technical difficulties. And that's my wife, so I'm not going to say nothing. ask those that have served. Go ahead, you can give them a hand. I'm going to ask those that have served in the United States Army, if you would come at this time. Anyone here that has served in the United States Army? Let's give her a hand as she's coming. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Those that have served the United States Navy, anyone that has served the United States Navy, anyone that served the United States Air Force, anyone served in the Air Force, anyone that served the United States Marine Corps, they would come. This is my dad. He feels the pain of his service every day in Vietnam, and they weren't able to remove all the bullet, but every day he feels the pain of his service. I say, thank you, Dad. I appreciate it. He's not one to boast or talk a lot, but proud to say I'm his son. Anyone that served, go ahead. Anyone that served in the Coast Guard, if you'd come, or National, 
National Guard, Coast Guard or National Guard, anyone? All right, I think we should all stand and give these veterans a great big hand and a thank you. You can remain standing. We're going to go into worship. And today we're celebrating 79 years as the Lafayette Pentecostal Church of God. Amen. We ought to hear a big amen today. Now, I don't look too bad for 79 years, do I? No, just kidding. But for 79 years we've been blessed to have a church where we can come, worship God how we feel, how the dictates of our hearts where we can hear the Word of God preached, the whole Word of God, not just portions, but the whole Word of God. Altars are still here today where people can come and give their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I don't believe you have to be in an altar to give your heart to the Lord, so don't get me wrong. I believe you can be anywhere and give your heart to the Lord. Amen? But thank God we have the opportunity to come. And Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. And I hope anybody that enters these doors, they feel welcome in this place. I thank God that the Pentecostal Church of God, mom and dad made me go to church down at the old church, and I remember picking gum out from under the church pews. Now, I hope nobody's putting gum under the pews today. If so, maybe a child one day will get to pick it off. But thank God for our children, amen. But I thank God for my Pentecostal heritage. I didn't always want to claim it or be a part of it. But thank God he never disowned me. So we're going to worship today. Let's just lift our hands and thank God for the opportunity we have to worship. Father, we love you this morning. We are truly grateful. We are truly thankful for this opportunity we have to be able to worship to you. God, I thank you for the freedom and the liberty we have to come into this place and lift up and magnify the holy name of Jesus. Lord, some men use your name in vain, but today we lift up the name of Jesus. We glorify it, we honor it, and we reverence it today. God, I pray for your freedom and your liberty in this place. God, I ask it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship God today. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. It's good seeing uh, Brother Hill here today with us. If you remember way back in the day, I had at least one of your kids at Sunnyside when I was a teacher a long time ago. I didn't know you then, but I did have one of your kids at Sunnyside, so I've known Pastor Hill for a long time. Glad to see him here today. Glad to see all of you here today in one accord to praise the Lord. Amen. Let's worship as we sing this opening song, Every Praise. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. 
glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. God, God my Savior, God my Healer, God my Deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God, my Savior. God, my Healer. God, my Deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Every praise. It's to our God. Every word of worship is one accord. Every praise, 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 every praise is to our God. Oh yes, every praise. Every praise. praise. Amen, amen. You know, I like that title, Every Praise. I did not grow up in this church chain. I grew up in the early church of God in Christ, but happy to be in the Pentecostal family. Some of you out there maybe grew up as Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Catholic, what have you. But I like what the word says every knee's going to bow. Amen. Every tongue's going to confess. It's not what church chain you grew up in. There's one Lord, one God. And he says, Jesus says, you can't come to the Father unless you come through me. And so I just thank him so much. I'm proud to be a part of this homecoming. Is it 79 years? I haven't been around for all those 79 years, but I've been around. And I'm very grateful and thankful. We're going to see the King one day, church. Amen. This next song is We Shall See the King. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride united with the groom. We shall see the king when he comes. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Are you ready should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say, well done, or go away? My home is for the pure, the vile can never stay. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King, we shall see the King, we shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power, we'll hail the blessed hour. 
We shall see the King when He comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? To crown your Savior, King and Lord of all. The kingdom of this world shall soon for Him fall. We shall see the King when He comes. Sing it, church. Oh, we shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. For He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. For oh, we shall see the King when He comes. For He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He Sing that chorus one more time, church. Oh, we shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. For He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Amen, church. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we have our prayer request, Brother Roy will come for our prayer request. Let's sing this worship song, church. And if you don't, if you're not sure what the familiar with the song, listen to the words. Just close your eyes. Think about Him. Nothing else. He's the, he's the reason that we're here. And just worship the Lord this morning, church. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. My, hope, my, my hope, hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in 
in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone for the stand before the throne Christ the the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground on Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand Christ the kings and he is lord of lords you know i kind of like that that first verse my hope is built on nothing less than jesus blood and righteousness i dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in jesus name you know there's a lot of stuff going on in this world right now we see storms coming from every direction the devil wants us to look and say that there's no hope and things are going down and things are falling apart. But trust in Jesus. I remember when in the Bible when I think it was Persia, can't remember it was one of these great armies coming in to Israel. And they send a letter to Hezekiah and he tells him, says, Hey, we're coming in there, we're taking everything out, and there's nothing you're going to do about it. All these other people, they trusted in their God, and it never worked, and it's not going to work with your God either. As a Hezekiah, he don't get all upset. He, don't get, he just goes out there before the Lord, and he throws that out there, that whole little letter, and he says, God, you see what these people are saying about you. He says, show them, God, how powerful you are. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter the problem. It doesn't matter how deep we are in this valley. God can pull us out and God can make a way. And He always has. And He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't matter how dark it looks. He is the light. He is the light. And we just need to trust in Him. I know sometimes we pray and we pray and we say, well, well, brother, I've been praying for this for years and I've been praying for this you don't know how long. I just got something to tell you right now. Keep praying. Keep praying. Because He will bring you through if you trust in Him. I look back and I see how many times I have failed, how many times that I have just struggled, and I look back and I see how He has pulled me out. 
I don't know how I was going to pay the bills. I don't know how I was going to, I was going to lose my house and, and everything else. But God has made a way in ways that I still cannot explain. We serve a God that is, He has no limits. He has no boundaries. He has nothing. And you know what else is awesome about our God? Our God is a God of new beginnings. He's a God of second chances. It doesn't matter where we've been. It doesn't matter how far we have fallen. He is a God of second chances. And He will take care of the needs. With a raise in your hand, you're saying, Brother, I have a need that I need God to move on. When we raise our hands, we're saying, I surrender this to you, God. I'm taking this off of my shoulders and I'm giving it to you because I believe that you're going to take care of this. Dear Heavenly Father, you know the need of everyone here this morning. Those that raised their hands, those that didn't raise their hands, God. You know the needs of the ones that are watching, God. There's not one need, God, that you cannot take care of. God, you are a miracle, God. You are a God that can do anything, and we believe that, God. God, move upon each and every one of those, God. Those with the sickness right now. Those that have COVID, God. Those that are sick that are in the hospital, God. Those that have financial needs, God. Those that have just fallen from you, God, that just need your touch. I pray right now that you reach to each and every one, God, that you move in a mighty way. And we believe this with an unlimited resting uh, faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. A hand clap of praise this morning, church. Amen, amen. You may be seated this morning. I have the honor and the privilege to introduce my pastor to the platform. And I want to thank him for coming today. And I want to thank him for seeing something in me that nobody else did. I remember when I 
he first asked me to be his youth pastor way back, I was like, I can't teach a class. I can't talk to nobody. He said, son, you get on your knees, you get your Bible, and let God do the rest. And that's what I've been doing for 32 years now almost. But thank God for his words of wisdom. He's been my friend, my help, and my strength through times of ministry. I've had to call him, and he's helped get me some strength to go on, right? <laughs> he's not going to tell on me, but anyway... I want to thank him for coming. He's going to introduce Sister Hill. Good to have her with, with us today. Amen. Give them and the Lord a hand. And when you leave today, there's a separate basket back there with his name on it, Brother Hill, Pastor Hill. Uh, if you drop an offering in there, we want to give him a good love, love offering this morning for taking time to be with us. He drove all the way from Indianapolis. That's it. Not too bad of a drive, but we want to be a blessing to him. Because I believe when we bless the ministry, God blesses us. And I believe that's why we're blessed church. Because we bless others and we bless the ministry. You guys have been a blessing to me and my family. And I appreciate you and your faithfulness and giving. And Brother Hill, will you come? He's going to sing for us. He's going to preach for us. All right. Thank you, Pastor. You want this? No. Nah. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Seventy-nine years of celebration today. Ain't that wonderful? Yeah. Amen. If it be of God, it stands. Amen. So years ago, started out and and got you know. The church is like people, you know, we, and that's what we are. We're the church, but you have your ups and downs. This church has been through a lot of things, but it always surfaces out on top. <laughs> Amen. In fact, about it, I believe it was our first Pentecostal Church of God in Indiana years ago, right? I want to introduce my wife today, and if she'll come and stand with me for a little bit. I'll try. <laughs> I'll try to stand for a little bit. Amen. All right. You're okay. okay. I'm going to have her say a word for you today. Just give a little testimony of some kind. Yeah. Good morning, brothers and sisters and family. There's a whole bunch of family. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I am... Very grateful to be here today with my husband, and we thank you for inviting us. This morning when I got up, I always listen, listen to some music in the morning, and one of the songs I heard is, um, I'm going to keep running on for Jesus, and I'm not tired yet. Amen. So I hope everybody else is going to run on for Jesus Amen. on this beautiful Sunday in November. Amen. And thank you again, and we're going to just enjoy the day. Thank you. And while I got her up here, she may as well help me sing, right? <laughs> Amen. He's sneaky. We, uh, I'm proud today to see a lot of my family here today, and uh, especially uh, my good friends too. Amen. Thank God for friends. How I many can say amen? amen. <clears throat> and uh, I found out one thing: I just keep getting greater in this world. And so uh, I've got six children and uh, 23 grandchildren, one on the way, and uh, I think I've got 24 great-grandchildren. Isn't that wonderful? And I've got three great-grandchildren and one on the way, I understand. I just keep getting greater. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> Oh, yeah, those three great, great. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's the way it is, okay. <laughs> great, great, okay. I think you do, we're going to sing. Now say, had me looking at you for so wide. Couldn't find nothing but a desert so dry. Oh. 
set me free. He shed his blood to cover my sin. And he gave me life that has no end. Now I'm off in a highway that leads home. I mean from a table that ever says waiting for me. Now I'm walking in the highway that leads home. I'm eating from the table that ever stands for. I'm drinking from the fountain that never runs dry. And I'm going to a country where we'll never more die. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Tricky. <laughs> Amen. I'll take it from I'll take it out of the box. Okay, thank you, son. Amen. I feel honored today to be here and stand in this sacred place behind this pulpit and thank you Pastor Chris for inviting me you know uh, it just kind of feels like home when I get here I guess that's because I was here for a while <laughs> for a day or two amen but anyway uh, open your Bibles today uh, to the book of Isaiah I'm going to read a, a few script or just a scripture here and and share with you today what I feel like the Lord has laid on my heart and hopefully that the word of God will feed your soul today you know we we do pretty good with our uh, natural foods pretty evident on most of us Amen. But sometimes we get pretty lean on our uh, spiritual man, don't we? Amen. That's why we need the Word of God. Hallelujah. And eating from the Word of God. A lot of ways to do that is when we come to church, especially we, we start uh, receiving the Word of God through preaching and teaching. At home we can study our Bible and we can feed our spiritual man. That's why Jesus said we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then when we worship the Lord, we start drinking from that fountain that never runs dry. It refreshes our soul as we worship in spirit and in truth. And we find our inner man beginning to uh, grow and become strong. Hallelujah. And this outward man, it perishes day by day. But thank God for that inward man, hallelujah, that he, he gets stronger. You know, we should be getting stronger, right? Yeah. How many know we're not babes in Christ after we've served God 30, 40 years? Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. We become full grown in the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, anyway, that's not my sermon. <laughs> um, Isaiah chapter 26, if you turn there, verse number 3, we'll be reading. And well, you find that little spot there in the Bible, Isaiah 26, 3. Here's the title of my sermon today, and if you'll keep this in mind, it might help you to understand what we're preaching about today. Peace of mind in troubled times. Peace of mind in troubled times. 
And uh, we all understand today that uh, we're in a battle, but the battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. <clears throat> and how many are glad you belong to God? Amen. Hallelujah. Bought by the blood. We're not our own. We've been bought by the, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou wilt keep him. Say him. Yes. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Man, that's wonderful, isn't it? What a promise. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Whose mind is stayed on the Lord. Yes. Amen. You say, but Pastor Hill, how can you have your mind on the Lord all the time? Well, you may not have your mind on the Lord all the time, but you don't forget Him from Sunday till next Sunday. Amen. Amen. You still know that He is Lord every day. Amen. And that He supplies every need in our life. He keeps us covered. Hallelujah. He takes care of us. But our mind is a precious thing that God has given us. Amen. Sometimes we take things for granted. But when you think about it, what have you been meditating on this week or the last few months uh, uh, what is your mind being crowded with uh, during these uh, uh, corona times and uh, all of that <clears throat> so you have to think about uh, our mind how important it is but the Bible tells us to keep our mind upon the Lord hallelujah man Sometimes we get our mind all wrapped up with the cares of life, right? But the cares of this life. You say, well, we can't hardly help that. Well, that's true. But when we think about it, we understand that the Lord is our helper. And that He's never been able to uh, falter. He's always been there to help us solve our problems. Then I thought of John 14 and 20. Uh, seven, where Jesus spoke to us about peace. He said, peace I leave with you. How many knows he was the prince of peace? He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. How many knows that Jesus had the greatest peace there was? He said, my peace I give unto you. So he said, let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. Now, Father, we thank you today for the privilege, God, to stand here before this precious crowd. Thank you, Lord, today for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, you will bring to my mind the things that I should say today, Lord. Help us to lift you up today, Lord. And I pray that our hearts and our minds will be open to receive your word today. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. So peace of mind is a priceless gift. You can't put a price on peace of mind. Amen. You can't buy it. Amen. Because it is a gift. For Jesus said he's going to give us this gift. And how many is glad you got that gift today? Hallelujah. <clears throat> so we cannot put a, a price on it. <clears throat> He said, I give it unto you, and you simply just got to receive it. If I give you something, you've got to receive it, right? And if you don't receive it, you don't got it. But thank God today that he has said he would give us a gift, and we have to receive it. We receive it by faith. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and this gift is for every believer what a precious gift it is. Hallelujah. But first of all, we have to ask for the gift. If you don't ask for the gift, you don't get it. If you don't ask God to forgive your sins, you don't get saved. Amen. If you don't ask God to heal you, you don't get healed. Hallelujah. If you don't ask God to supply every need in your life, you probably won't get every need met. Amen. But thank God that all the precious gifts of God come down from the Father of lights, and He upbraideth not. Hallelujah. He's no respecter of person. He loves us in spite of ourselves. Hallelujah. 
But we must ask for this precious gift. Amen. The gift of peace. Hallelujah. There's many different reasons why Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. There's a lot of reasons. And one thing for sure, we know that Jesus was not caught off guard when this conva, whatever you call it, this, this terrible disease, amen, he was not caught off guard, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. How many knows he knew it was coming? How many knows he's told us all about it? And the reason a lot of people don't know about it is because they haven't looked in the Bible. You've got to see it in the Bible, right? How many knows that Jesus knew? Uh, he, he knew the future. He knows all about it. He knows the things that we're going through. He understands all about those good things and all those bad things. So there are many, many different reasons, okay? He knows about the, the virus that has swept the, the world and, uh, and our nation. Amen. He knows about the political corruption in not only in our country but around the world. He knows about the uh, the drugs and and the addictions that have swept across and sweeping across our nation today and destroying a lot of lives. Amen. He knows about the killings and the crimes. He knows about all the terrible abortions and killings of babies, and he knows all the struggles that we go through today. Hallelujah. But how many knows he can navigate us through it? Hallelujah. And take us to heaven one of these days. And it'll all be over. Thank God. Hallelujah. So a lot of simple things we understand today that are going on. Hallelujah. All you have to do is turn on your television today and you can see the Word of God being fulfilled right before your eyes. How many can say amen? Amen. And so we understand today that we live in, uh, in close to the end time. We're living, close, we're living in a day when the rapture could take place. Amen. It could take place before this service is over today. Amen. No man knows the day nor the hour, but Jesus gave us some insights in the Word of God to help us understand if we read His Word and understand, amen, that... We are living in a day when Jesus can come and take us out of this world to a brand new world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows all about that. In Matthew 24, verse 3, there's a, there's a passage of Scripture I want to share with you a little bit this morning. I mean, where uh, Jesus... And his disciples were out on the Mount of Olives and 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 the disciples they came and they they asked Jesus three three questions. They said, Well, when will this temple going to be torn down and and uh, when is your coming and and what shall be the signs of your coming and the signs of the end of the world? Amen. They they wanted to know when this is going to happen. Well, Jesus knew the future, and he knows all, all these things. And one of them, one of these questions today is what I'm going to try to share with you. The man says, what shall the sign of thy coming be? What kind of signs are there going to be uh, just before your coming? And, and this question has to do with the coming of, in, uh, of Jesus in the clouds to rapture the church. Amen? That's the question that I want to kind of talk about today. Amen. His coming in the clouds. Amen. To rapture the church out of this world. Hallelujah. No, I don't know if you understand this today, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you do. Hallelujah. One of these days we're going to take a plain air ride. Amen. We're going to lose our gravitation. Amen. And we're going to be caught up. We're going to be changed from this mortal being to an immortal being. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. Hallelujah. Just to know, hallelujah, what a change is coming. I remember how excited I got when I uh, got saved. What a change came over me. Hallelujah. What a wonderful time. Hallelujah. To know that I've been forgiven of my sin 
and the weight that I had been carrying and the mess that I had made in my life. Hallelujah. When Jesus came into my life and the blood was applied to my soul, hallelujah, my sins was washed away. Hallelujah. How do you know it was? Amen. I can't explain it, but I can tell you one thing. I felt like I was led out of prison. I felt like a brand new person. Old things have begun to pass away. And behold, all things became new. Oh, hallelujah. But I'm looking forward for the rapture, for the rapture, when they just uh, shed off this whole flesh of mine. Hallelujah. And this hammer man is going to come out. Hallelujah. Change from mortal to immortality. Glory to God. Oh, I feel like a preacher up here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Matthew 24, verse 6 said, Jesus said, You shall hear of wars. Now here's the signs. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Some of you sitting here today, that's all you've ever heard. Amen? Since you've been old enough to hear, is wars and rumors of wars. Hallelujah. We just take it for granted, don't we? But thank God today for... All of our military people, praise God. People who have given their lives and people who have went and fought for us and, and left their limbs somewhere else and things of that nature. But thank God today, amen, for our military. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse number 7, he said, here's another sign. He said, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes and divers of places, different places. Amen. Uh, listen, uh, it's nothing new today uh, to hear there's an earthquake. Right here in our own land. Amen. One right after another. Sometimes uh, the things we hear just kind of pass over us because it becomes an every, everyday thing, seems like, anymore. Hallelujah. Then in verse 8, here's another sign. He said, these are the beginnings of sorrows. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Just the beginning. Amen. But in verse 9 he said, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Huh? How many knows, amen, Christians are being slaughtered? Amen. How many knows... Amen, that Christians are being hated. Amen. My pastor, he says, they hate you because, they're, because you, you ain't, you know, you're not them. They hate you because you ain't them. Or they ain't you, I'm sorry. Amen. <clears throat> then in verse 10, he said, Then shall you be offered... You shall be offended and shall, and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Now, there's a spirit of hate in the world like we've never saw before. There's, there's a hate, amen, if we're not careful, it can get right into our own spirit. If we're not careful, it can get right into our own families. Amen? How many knows that's a terrible spirit? That spirit of hate. Just the sound of it sounds evil. How many knows it is evil? Amen. The spirit that we are battling with today is the spirit of hate. Amen. And so, thank God today for the Holy Ghost to shed abroad in our hearts. Hallelujah. The love of God. Hallelujah. We need the love of God like we've never needed before. Hallelujah. Then in verse 12 he said, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Hmm? Because iniquity abound, the love of many are going to wax cold. Hmm? How many knows that's a part of our society today? Yes. Amen? But in verse 13 he said, But he that endure, but he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. 
Think about that. It looks like in these last days we're going to have to endure some things that we don't enjoy. How many is enduring some of the things you don't enjoy today? Huh? How many know we're enduring today? But how many knows today that Jesus is our helper? Hallelujah. No man's a match to the devil. Amen. Without Jesus Christ in your life. Hallelujah. Because you know what? We can't help ourselves. We keep messing up in this world. I don't know about you, but before I got saved, I thought I could handle it. I thought I could, you know, I could take care of my own self. But amen, when I look back over my life, I know I was making a terrible mess out of my life. Hallelujah. And one day I realized, hallelujah, what a mess I was and that I had to turn to the Lord God, hallelujah, for salvation to get my life straightened out. I want you to know, friend, today, God has never changed. He's still changing lives, amen, and taking lives that's been messed up by the devil and making something good out of it. Hallelujah. He can do it. <clears throat> so we're enduring a lot of things today. And if the Lord tires, we're going to endure some more things. I don't mean to paint you a sad picture this morning, but I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Amen? We need to be prepared, be ready. Hallelujah. We need to understand what's going on today in the light of God's Word. Hallelujah. Let's look at Paul, what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. He said, This know also in the last days peerless times are going to come. Dangerous times. Amen? Dangerous times shall come. <clears throat> Serious times. Enduring times. Hallelujah. This know, he said also, that in the last days, <clears throat> for men shall become lovers of their own selves. Amen? The love of many is going to wax cold toward their neighbor and to their fellow man and, and things of that nature. Amen. And so the love is going to be turned inwardly and we're going to be lovers of ourselves. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Amen. Mm, we could spend some time on some of these things. Disobedient to parents. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. You know, we live in a day when parents are having a hard time. Yeah. <clears throat> when I grew up, I had a hard time when I got the hickory on my back and my rear. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said, I don't believe in all that stuff. Well, it didn't kill me. It made me a better fellow. I'll tell you one thing, I respected authority. I learned how. I learned how to say yes, ma'am, yes, sir. I learned how, amen, to respect. Hallelujah. I didn't talk back to my mom and dad. Hmm? <clears throat> yeah. If you did, you in my day growing up, you'd have to repent real quick <laughs> after you got your beating. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, <clears throat> he said, they're going to be without natural affection. Truth breakers. Amen? We used to be able to count on a person's word, right? If, if they promised you something, they'd come through. Hallelujah. Or if you didn't just take their word, you'd take a handshake. Hallelujah. I remember one time, I don't want to take a lot of time today, but I remember one time when <clears throat> we needed a mule to plow our garden in cornfield. And uh, 
So some guy came by one day and he had this nice, pretty mule. I'm going to tell you there's a difference between a mule and a horse. <laughs> Amen? If it, I was born in the, in, the, in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, in the Appalachian Mountains, and, and our cornfields and gardens were on the side of the hill. Most of our houses were too, on the, on the hillside. And so a horse won't plow on a hillside. He got big old hoofs. And so if you try to plow a horse on the hillside, it hurts his it hurts his ankles, and he'll take you and the plow stock both off of the hill. <laughs> you only make one round, and that's it. But you can take a little mule. You got a mule. You got little feet, and he can plow all day beside of a mountain. Amen. But the reason I was to telling you this is because we live in a day, Amen, when Things have changed a lot. Can you say amen? amen? Things have changed a whole lot. Hallelujah. So what happened? One day a guy come by with a mule and my, my, dad, my stepdad was uh, working in the coal mines and when he came home, this man was waiting there and he had this nice pretty mule and he said, um, Mr. Hilton, he said, I'll sell you this mule for a hundred dollars. Well, back in those days, a hundred dollars was like a thousand dollars today, amen. And so, <clears throat> my stepdad bought that mule, and he said, "Now this mule can work. Uh, it's a good worker. It's a good rider, and all those good things, amen." And so he said, "All I want is the saddle, and you can have the mule and the bridle." And my stepdad said, "Okay." So we took the mule right away down to the to the crib, you know, and we threw a, a try to put the rigging on him. He started kicking and a bucking, and amen. And you could not get a rig on him whatsoever, amen. Whatsoever, he just kept kicking until you, uh, he just you just could not put a rig on him. In other words, you couldn't put uh, things on to make him plow and things of that nature. Anyway, my stepdad <clears throat> ran in the house and got his shotgun and he ran after this fellow. This fellow had this saddle on his back, you know, running up the side of the mountain, amen, and. And he was trying to get away, and my stepdad had the shotgun after him, amen, because he lied to him. You see, a handshake didn't work, and the word didn't work. And that's kind of like it is today, folks. Hallelujah. You, you, can't, you can't just accept somebody's word all the time. You can't always just accept their handshake, amen, because we live in a day, amen, when people will lie to you, amen, they're truth breakers, false accusers, incontent. Fear us, amen, a despisers of those that are good, traitors, heedy, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Think about that. That's the spirit that we live in today. Hallelujah. And we could preach on a lot of those things today, but I'm not going to take a lot of that time, amen. Notice that despisers of those that are good. Hallelujah. But aren't you glad today that the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if they despise you. Just keep on walking for Jesus and keep on talking for Jesus. Then he says, they, in these last days, amen, peerless times will come, you know, when people become uh, pleasures, uh, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Hallelujah. I love pleasure. In fact, about before I got saved, I, I loved the pleasures of sin. Huh? Nobody here? I'm going to preach back here. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Lovers of pleasures for a season. Lovers of pleasures before I growed up. Lovers of pleasures before I become a man and put away childish things. Can you say amen? amen? But today, folks, we see this spirit and it's a sign of the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul says, they, amen, they're going to have a form of godliness, but they're going to be denying the powers thereof. Hallelujah. A lot of, there's a lot of people carrying the name around Christian. Amen. amen. But their fruit does not prove out to be Christian. The life they live does not prove out to be a Christian. Amen? Amen. 
There's a lot of so-called Christians today think it's all right to have a beer with dinner. Oh, you got quite again. Ain't no beer drinkers in here today, are there? Especially if you've got Jesus. Amen? God help me today. Mm. Have a form of godliness, but denying the power. The power that changes your life. The power that will cause you to live right instead of wrong. The power to have the conscience that tell you when it's when you're doing something wrong, amen, or saying something wrong, the Holy Ghost will, uh, amen, uh, speak to you and help you and correct you, amen. The power, denying the power thereof of a changed life, a holiness life, amen. Now, even though we know that Troubles and circumstances around us are real. How many can say they're real? And that the battle for our mind and soul are real? We can still have peace of mind. i got to get to that. Because that's what I'm preaching about today. Having peace of mind in troubled times. Having peace of mind in troubled times. The Bible says in Second or Second Chronicles twenty fifteen, "Be not afraid or dismayed, for the battle is not yours but God's." Hallelujah! Don't be afraid. There's a lot of people living in fear today. Now, don't get me wrong. This virus, folks, is is no no play game. It's serious. Amen. I'm I'm glad to say today that. You're doing the right things. Man, you're wearing your mask and all those good things. Not only take care of yourself, but take care of others. Can you say amen? I've never seen a day like this, and I've been in this world quite a long time. In fact, about it won't be long. I'll be 85. Amen? And so, I've never seen anything like we're going through today. I've seen a lot of terrible things in my life, but I've, I've never went through anything like this. But God's going to bring us through. Hallelujah. Our God's got better plans for us. Amen. We have to understand the Word of God is going to come to pass whether we like it or not. The Word of God. God has ways of getting our attention. God has ways of getting a country's attention. He's got ways of getting leaders' attention. And if he can't get their attention in this life, he's going to get their attention in the world to come. For the Bible said every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid, he said. In Romans 8, 37, it says, Paul said, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah, you're more than a conqueror. Just stay true to God. Amen. Keep your prayer life up. Stay faithful to the house of God. Hallelujah. Be faithful to the kingdom of God. Be faithful to support the ministry. Be faithful. Do the things. Amen. And occupy until Jesus comes. Occupy means keep on keeping on and do all do a little more than you've been doing. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And in spite of all the chaos and the evil that is going on in this world, all all believers have a bright future. Huh? You say it don't look so bright today, Brother Hill. But you've got to look into the future. You've got to look and see what the Bible says about your future. Listen, there's no greater authority than the Word of God. There's no greater truth than the Word of God. God's not a man that He would lie. Hallelujah. God declares every believer has a bright future. Hallelujah. You've got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to accept Him as Lord of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. So we've got a bright future. 
Luke 21, 28, Jesus said, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Look up. Amen. Hallelujah. And lift up your head. Hallelujah. Don't, don't become defeated. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Look up. Lift up your head. For your redemption draweth nigh. The rapture is drawing nigh. Amen. We've got a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. God has made it possible. We can't, we can't argue with God about His Word. Hallelujah. If we, we understand the Word of God and the prophecies of old are coming to pass before our eyes today. Amen. And we are closer now than we've ever been. The coming of the Lord to rapture us out of this world to a better world. Hallelujah. I will thank God today for the very hour and day that we live in. It helps me to understand that my redemption is drawing nigh. It's closer now than it's ever been. Jesus said in John uh, chapter 14, verse 1 through, 30, 1 through 3, Let not your heart be troubled. Hallelujah. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't live in fear. Amen. Don't try to figure it out. Just simply get in. Amen. And, and look what the Bible says about it. Hallelujah. Let not your heart be troubled. Mm. You believe in God, believe also in me. How many believes in the Almighty God? Amen. How many believes what He says? Amen. It's one thing to believe there's a God. It's another thing to believe what He says. Amen. Hallelujah. We must believe what He said. Hallelujah. Now notice what He says. <clears throat> you, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also, also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. Thank God He went, how many knows He, he went to heaven. Hallelujah. How many knows He promised He's coming back. How many Promise, amen, to prepare a place for us. I said, thank God, hallelujah, He has prepared a place for us. Oh, listen, He prepared this whole earth for us. He prepared this planet we, we live in today. He prepared this country we live in today. Amen. He made a way for us to have a house to live in, a church to go to. Amen. Thank God He's going to prepare a place for us, and it's going to be a better place than this place. Hallelujah. And he said, if I go away, I'm coming back and I'm going to come back and get you that where I am, you can be also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I want to be there, don't you? I'll shut up after about an hour. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm getting close to the end. <clears throat> God is preparing the greatest homecoming that has ever been. Now we got a nice crowd out today, considering the seating, you know, things of that nature, and, and the things that we're battling with with this coronavirus and all that. <clears throat> Amen? It's a wonderful homecoming. It's a time to celebrate. It's a time... To look back over where we started and where God has brought us from. It's time to look back and, and see how good God's been. Not only to us as an individual, but to our families, to our church, things of that nature. Hallelujah. And we celebrate today 79 years for this church here in Lafayette, Indiana. Hallelujah. But there's a great homecoming, and it's, God is preparing it. Hallelujah. He's getting it ready for the greatest homecoming that has ever been. Hallelujah. Just any day now, God is going to say to Jesus, His Son, Son, you're going to have to 
Go bring my children home. Hallelujah. There's a cloud out there waiting for you to step on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to bring the children home. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, God knows how much His children can go through. But the Bible teaches us that He's going to get us out of this world before that old Antichrist comes along. And before the great tribulation day, He's going to get us out of this world. Hallelujah. And we're going to, get, we're going to leave this world, hallelujah, in the rapture to ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, it says, For the Lord Himself shall this sin from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the, of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, in other words, raptured up, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall all we ever be. Hallelujah. I can't hardly contain myself today. Hallelujah. For Jesus is getting ready to come. Amen and step out on the clouds of glory. Amen. He's going to shout something. I don't know what he's going to shout. Amen. But I'd like to think he's going to say it something like Amen. Ready or not, here I come. Hallelujah. I'm telling you folks, and the trump of God is going to sound. Amen. And the dead, amen, is going to come up out of the grave. The saints of God are going to bust up on those graves. Hallelujah. They may be sown in corruption, but they're going to be raised incorruptible. Thank God. And we who are mortal beings, amen, are going to be changed from mortal to immortality. Amen. And we'll be caught up together uh, with the dead in Christ and meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. I told you you've got a bright future. Look at somebody and say, you got a bright future. Come on. We ain't got nothing to be sad about. We got a lot to be glad about. How many know we're not going to. God never intended us to stay in this world forever. I ought to give you a hand clap. Hallelujah. At this homecoming in heaven, we'll be reunited with loved ones and friends that's gone on before us. Some of them have been gone quite a long time. And some of them have gone recently. But our loved ones, we never forget. Our good friends, we never forget. And when they leave this world with a testimony that they have Jesus Christ in their lives, it gives us hope that we're going to see them again. How many can say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> what a day that'll be. I'm closer now than I ever have been. Every now and then I go by and I look at that little piece of land I've got over here right off of Nice Street. It's, it's about that wide, about that deep. My late wife was laying there. Hey, wouldn't it be wonderful just we'd just be raptured right up out of that grave together? <laughs> Amen. My wife's husband, he left this world believing in God. She has a son. She had two sons and God took one of them. God took one of my sons. But he had plans for him. How many can say amen? How many know God got a plan for your life? How many believe you're fulfilling your plan now? Come on. It's never too late. It's never too late. 
I've been asked this question a lot of times. Will we know one another in heaven? The answer is real easy. Three-letter word, yes. Y E S. Will we know each other in heaven? Y E S. Yes. We'll know each other in heaven. A little hard. It's hard to comprehend that, isn't it? Amen. But let's see what Paul says here. I'm I'm about done. Chapter 13, verse 12. Paul says, For now we see through a glass darkly. In other words, a little hard to comprehend, but we believe the Word of God. But then, face to face, when they get there, it's going to be like face to face. We're face to face today. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm face to face to you. Huh? But then face to face. Now I know in part. <laughs> Thank God for what little I know. Amen? Thank God for what little I know. I know in part. But then shall I know as also I am known. Amen? They know me. A lot of people know me by Pastor Hill. A lot of people know me by Leroy Hill. Some people know me by an agita- being an agitator. Amen? And, and, you know, how many knows everybody's got some kind of a name <laughs> that mom didn't give you? <laughs> Amen? But notice here. Then shall I know as also I am known. Yes, when you get to heaven, hallelujah, it's not a prayer tell. Huh? We're not going to be like, you know, Angels with wings floating around all over. We're going to know as we are known. In other words, amen, uh, this, uh, you know, the Bible talks about, and God help me to shut up. Uh, The Bible talks about uh, that we're a body, soul, and spirit. Amen. I know quite a bit about this body. Amen. But I don't know a whole lot about my soul. Amen? And my spirit. But I know one thing for sure. According to the Bible, our soul is part of our feelings. And all you have to do is feel, you know, your skin, you know. That means your soul just feels, it just, it, it's, the, it's the real person behind this, uh, all these bones and skin and muscle and meat. Amen. But the real soul is the, the soul is a real person. The soul is a real person. And let me tell you something, the soul never dies. Amen. I said the soul never dies. The body dies. Amen. But the soul never dies. And one of these days we're going to, amen, put on a brand new body. Can you shout amen? A body that will never get sick. A body that will never die. A body that will never have a heartache. Amen. A body that will live forever and forever. And so shall we be with the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to bow your head while they come to the music. Well, your head bowed and eyes closed for a moment. I'm going to ask you a simple question today. If, you, if you're here today, and of course you are, and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have a personal relationship with Him, If you'd like for me to pray for you that you'll get saved before Jesus comes, that you can have this peace that I've been preaching about today, that you can have this hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ. If you're not saved today, if you're not a Christian, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, just lift your hand and that by that you're saying, Pastor Hill, Please remember me in prayer. Is there anyone today that's brave enough? Just lift your hand and say, I'm not ready. You don't have to say anything, but you're saying that by raising your hand. I don't feel like I'm ready. 
Anybody here today? Amen. Now, Father, You know our hearts today. You know our lives. And God, I believe I saw a hand. I'm asking You, Lord, touch this precious soul today. Save them, Lord, before it's too late. Help them to call upon Jesus before it's too late. And God, today, I pray for every brother and sister. It's in this congregation today. They're doing battle, trying to adjust, trying to keep on keeping on. I pray you'll give them the courage to do so. I pray today, Lord, that you'll touch each life. Keep us covered by the Holy Spirit, Lord. Protect us, Lord. You build a hedge around Job. You protected him. You're no respecter of persons, Lord. Protect us, Lord. Protect our families, our children, our grandchildren, our friends, our neighbors. Help us, God, today in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. amen. Would you stand with me? Pastor Chris, would you come? Where you at? Amen. I'm going to let him conclude the service because I don't know how he works his altar now. In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war You guard my soul You alone are the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me In the eye of the storm In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war You guard my soul You alone are the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me In the eye of the storm When the solid ground is falling out From underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see When I realize I've been sold out By my friends and my family I can feel the rain reminding me In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war You guard my soul You alone are the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me In the eye of the storm In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war You guard my soul You alone are the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me In the eye of the storm In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war You guard my soul Lord, you alone are the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me In the eye of the storm I don't know about you this morning
But my sails have been torn. I've been in some storms. But I can stand here today and tell you there's not been one storm that God has abandoned me on. But God has stood faithful through every storm and trial and test that I've had to go through today. And I'm thankful this morning. God don't get afraid of our storms. But so many times we get afraid in our storms that we back up from God. The Bible says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. When you're in a storm, just stand still and look at what God can do. Amen. Can we sing that one more time and we'll be dismissed? I'm thankful that He is the eye of our storm today. Listen to the words if you don't know the song. Bring up verse 2, Sister Stephanie. When my hopes and dreams are far from me And I'm running out of faith You ever been there? I see the future I picture Slowly fade away And when the tears of pain and heartache Are pouring down my face I find my peace in Jesus' name And in the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war you guard my soul, Lord, you alone are the anchor, when my sails are torn, your love surrounds me, in the eye of the storm, yes, you alone are the anchor, when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Are you thankful today that he did us in the midst of our storms? Amen. God is faithful today. Thank you for coming out today. For I am the Lord thy God, and I say to this day, my people, stand on my word, stand on my promises, trust me, look not to the world, nor the things of this world, but look unto me, saith the Lord, for I have not changed, I have not lost my power or my abilities, I am the Lord thy God, and I am with thee, my people, today." Trust me and know that surely I am the Lord thy God, thy deliverer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we lift our hands and thank God today for that promise? God has not changed, church. The circumstances around us are changing every minute of every day, but God never changes. Hallelujah. Go ahead. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone. Yes, all my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood, and now all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone, and all my sins are forgiven. Oh, I've been washed by 
Goodbye. Goodbye.